So what is HWC about? HWC is Pulver HWC. It's how we communicate. 20 years into this internet revolution, how has the way that people communicate with people changed? What matters? Is it what we say or what we don't say? What does it mean that when you talk, call a call center, you're going to be most likely talking to a computer rather than a person? How are you understood? Are we talking about reality, augmented reality? Are we talking about virtual reality? Oh, where are we in the continuum of conversations? And, and when, I, when I look at this whole how we communicate spectrum, and we look at a video, we look at a, a website, we look at a, a conversation, to me, we have content. Sometimes we want to know context. We want to gather the community to have a conversation. Why? In most cases, because you want to drive commerce. And if you can gather, gather the, the community and drive commerce around a conversation, you're communicating too. Well, I'm looking at the whole spectrum of where this is going. Frankly, in 1966, AT&T is quite a powerful monolithic entity. It was where the world went to to reach out and touch someone. In 2016, has Facebook become AT&T of 1966? Is Facebook actually connecting more people in the world than AT&T ever did? Is Facebook a place where you can literally reach out and touch someone, get into the flow of someone's life, actually be part of those conversations, help facilitate connecting, help discover and make new friends, help live your life? Can you actually live a better life within Facebook of 2016 than you could with AT&T in, in 1966? I don't know. But AT&T got broken up at least in America, though the AT&T version in Canada still persists. But where has technology innovation taken us? And why is it that the more we grow and the more we digital we are, the more we have a need for that face-to-face -face contact? Where I think the more digital we become, the more intimacy we must have. There's like a correlation between the two. So, and now we're living in a world where we carry devices sometimes on our arms to give us feedback that help us better understand who we are. Does it amplify our intuition? I don't know, but it lets us keep track of our steps. We can track, keep track of our health. How do we interact with our bodies? How do we interact with, with the, the, the world around us? Where does that go? How does technology affect us? Uh, for someone who's spiritual, are we more spiritual when we go quiet? Or, or, or are we more connected when we use devices? Or can we be quiet and connected? Or do we just have to meditate? Maybe we just have to pull back and take it in. I don't know. But how we communicate is going to be a multidisciplinary activity, starting with the communication pioneers that changed the way the world communicates over the last 20 years. I will look to the future, to where they think things are, but let's face it, hindsight's 2020. All the great things that everybody missed, who's going to admit to that? I don't know. But if you look at how the world changes, just year by year from 1995 to 2015, looking into 16, there are things that happen that some people, someone must have said was going to happen, but I don't know who they are. And we just look at how kids, what's so interesting is these days, instead of kids learning from their parents, it's the parents learning from their kids. It is parents that are picking up the visual cues on how to be human, how the world's shifting. You know, maybe it was the music of the kids became the parents' music and then it shifted. But these days, once a person gets to a certain age, they're actually teaching their parents how they communicate. And yes, that we have generation gaps, like never before. But never before has the world been more connected than it is today. And never before have we had a chance to have a back channel for humanity to connect to each other. Because we're living in a world where every voice does matter. And that amplification can go viral like we've never heard of before. Where is this going? What's next? How do we take advantage of this? How do we commercialize this? How do we plan for the future? Well, I don't know. But I'm doing this conference series to explore this, to look for people that are interested about the future, some to reminisce on the past, but together to put together a charter for where, where we go and, and to be open enough that we're wrong and be accepting enough that maybe some of us got it right. 
and, and understand that without knowing what we're doing, we can make amazing things happen. And sometimes we're bounded too much by what we think. And, and, and being open to not knowing could be more powerful than being smart about what you do know, or you find that balance. Anyway, HWC is how we communicate, my definition. Doing a summit in Silicon Valley, May uh, 18th and 19th, three-day conference in Boston in September, the 20th and 22nd. And uh, I don't know what the next big killer app on the internet will be, but at the end of the day, I still think voice is a killer app. I think hugging is a killer function. I think that at the end of the day, we are people first, machines third. Humanity still persists. There's still the human element. Uh, we cannot avoid. And we have to deal with being people. We have to deal with how we communicate, how we connect with uh, each other. You have the one-to-one, -to -one, to one-to-many. You have many-to-many. -many. Then we have inside ourselves, ourselves, and how we listen, how we hear, how we feel, how we get feedback from things trying to help us, and how we use that information to connect with others also collectively to communicate silently or unsilently. So, I don't know how we communicate, because subtlety doesn't really exist in a technical term. But I do know that a pregnant pause in a meeting is sometimes much more powerful than speaking for 12 minutes. And how do we equate silence into saying something? How do we infer? I don't know. But we will talk about it in September and in May. Did I mention that one of the first people I invited to the September conference was Deepak Chopra? I, I think that we have to have a soul horizon. We have to be, allow ourselves to be open to what we don't know, to the possibility of what could be, so that we can deal with what is. When you take away the soul of an event, we, do, we dehumanize. Technology has a great way of creating big brands with no soul. I like to think that the underlying theme of uh, what we do, what I do, is all about soul. I think Billy Joe tries to sing about it several times, but it's a lot about being and present and feeling and touching. And the words don't really matter anymore because they're so abused and overused and so torn and worn out that we've got to a place where soul itself sometimes has no meaning. But you can feel it if you know it. And you know it. And then you could be a soul survivor. And I think that's part of our goal here is to help bring soul back into stuff. As much as it is to help better understand how people do communicate and how we may be able to take that what we know and apply it to what will be. You know, do we time travel in our minds? Or is it in the physical world? Are, are we re-experiencing life all over again as deja vu? Or are we just having premonitions of what will be and we understand what, will, what can happen? Or did we already have this conversation? I think we did, about 15 years ago. Um, some things repeat themselves. Not always on purpose. I mean, I like it.